Have you guys found yourself in a dilemma where you are thinking of getting a third party lens, a 14 through 24 Sigma 2.8 or a Sony 12 through 24 F4? In this video, I'm gonna dive into both of these lenses. I'm gonna give you five reasons to look at both of these lenses to see which one suits your needs a little bit better. I've owned both of these lenses for two years. I've had the Sigma repaired because I dropped it and I actually got the Sony used. Both of these lenses are within about the same price range. I'm really gonna want these lenses if you're doing videos like this so you can see everything, or if you're doing real estate, these are you're definitely your money lenses. So one thing I haven't seen anyone ever talk about on these review videos is the lens caps on both of these. On the Sigma, this lens cap, I have probably lost about five or six times and have to continue buying them. The reason why, is this does not want to stay on. It fits perfect and it's not going to fit on anything else, um, but it slides right off. I don't want to even shake it because it's going to break. On the Sony, this thing is nothing is going to make this lens come off for any reason unless you hit these two buttons right here. To replace either of these lenses as a game lens caps is a game changer difference. This is under 20 bucks with shipping, even if you're paying for shipping. This thing was like $120 or more I lost and it had to come from Japan. So that's something you gotta think about too when you're looking at both of these lenses. The Sigma 14 through 24 F 2.8. On the Sony, you're gonna have a 12 millimeter F4. So everything's looking pretty good in here. It's not wildly out of focus for being an F 2.8, but it does look good. These lenses are great for showing real estate, which is the primary use that I have for them. But every now and then I do a video that's maybe food related in a really tight spot in the wide angle lens. Helps show everything while you're there. It's fully open at f2.8. You can see a ton of stuff on here. Hopefully, I think these lenses make the guns look a little bit bigger, <laughs> at least when I've seen myself in photos. Obviously on these wide angle lenses, you get really close to it and just looks Awkward. Like the out of focus elements, the softer background that you're getting on the F 2.8. So for certain times, certain aspects of filming, that F 2.8 you just can't beat. You can't like make a negotiable difference between the F 4 and the F 2.8. There is a game changer view on there. Um, but you don't see all of the room and that might not be as important depending on what your subject is. Like me and you right now watching this video, making this video. But next one's gonna be the F4 Sony. There's the 12 through 24 on here right now. My arms look super weird and way too long on this, but you see a ton more of the room and immediately that F4 between F2.8, just a completely different look. So if you're trying to do more of your video work, especially in real estate and food, if you're trying to get more of those out of focus elements, the F2.8 is just seriously a game changer on there. Um, in between these two lenses, they're really close in price, so it's kind of negotiable on, you know, what do you want to have? Do you want to have the widest view? And do you want to have a little more focus? Or do you want to have the opportunity to get some of those elements out of focus and have a little bit tighter, more intimate view? So here's the, I just had the 12. Let's just push it to 14 right there. So that's, a, that's about the same as the Sigma lens on there. So I like that versatility to have, you know, 12 or 14 versus like on this one, you you stop at 14. With these two lenses, typically trying to show all of the space. And when I'm doing videos, I'm utilizing manual focus with these lenses because I'm walking through a space. And I have personally noticed on the Sigma, it does a better job. And this is just me, doesn't mean it's right. But I've noticed the Sigma does a better job of autofocus when walking through spaces if you're not utilizing manual focus. Even on manual focus on this lens in particular, I really get a bad manual focus. And sometimes I have to really review videos on site to even see that before going home. Cause I've had that problem before where I've recorded on site, gone home, and then it is crap footage and not even usable. Shoot video, I'm typically using S-Log3 on the Sony a7S III. I personally, more often than not, do auto ISO and set the exposure bias to one through 1 1.7. Having the F 2.8 lens keeps my ISO super low so that I have a super clean image. The F4 lens still does a great job, but if you're in a very poorly, poorly lit 
house, which is typically this scenario, you're going to see some severe ISO at ISO 3200 and a ton of noise, which just doesn't look good, which you can sometimes correct and fix, but I'd rather have the ability to nail it in camera versus wasting my time and going back and forth on trying to denoise footage after the fact. So the Sigma definitely does a better job for me for video walkthroughs and low lit videos. And so on the flip side, when we're going back to photo, having those extra two millimeters, like I kind of showed earlier, makes a wild difference. And there's a lot of times where you can really get by with a 16 or 17 or 18, but there's sometimes that the 12 is the absolute game changer and it shows everything that you need to show on there. I personally have had so many times where customers want me to go back for small things that are detail shots or something that they thought that I missed that they never asked for, but no one has ever said it wasn't wide enough. They've said it's too wide or it looks too good, but no one has ever said it's not wide enough. And with the 14 or the 16, you're gonna have to back yourself up into the corner. With the 12, you actually have some room to breathe. So if I'm gonna utilize these two lenses in my daily kit, the 14 through 24, I'm gonna use for video, and the 12 through 24 is gonna be my guy for photo. But it's literally just, you know, what day, what house, where are we at, and what's the project that we're trying to complete. So that's my review of having these two lenses for about two years. I hope that helps you make a choice in which one you think works best for you. If you guys are into, if you guys are into real estate, video, 3D, anything like that, Subscribe to this channel because that's what I talk about on here and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.